A growing body of research shows that meditation on loving kindness and compassion can improve our mood, reduce stress, improve relationships, and increase empathy and compassion. Regular practice of loving kindness meditation helps to stimulate changes in the brain. This process is called neuroplasticity. Meta meditation is found to strengthen the part of the brain connected with empathy and emotional intelligence. So people are not stuck at where they are. Our brains can be molded to increase positive emotions. We can strengthen these qualities through meditation. The Pali word for loving kindness is metta. It refers to a feeling of goodwill and thoughts that wish happiness for another. It is also the willingness to forgive any fault. Metta has been translated as universal friendliness. It is open-hearted love, non-discriminating, and goodwill to all. Would you like to learn more about metta and use it to generate happiness and fulfill your life by enhancing positive emotions such as joy, love, cheerfulness, appreciation, and lightheartedness. Today, we learn more about Metta from Bhante Dr. Chandima, who is a much demanded speaker in the international Buddhist circuit. Bhante Dr. Chandima is an associate editor of the Journal of International Buddhist Studies at the Buddhist Research Institute of Mahachala Long Kong, Raja Vidyalaya University in Thailand, and a research scholar at the Ronin Institute in the United States. Bhante Dr. Chandima. The Buddha's discourse on the Karaniya Metta Sutta starts by listing attributes that Metta practitioners should possess. Some of them are personal attributes of character and attitude of mind, such as being upright, obedient, and humble. There are also attributes on the need to lead a simple life with little attachment and our relationship with others, such as being discreet, not greedily attached to families and should not commit any sort of wrong. Why do you think the Buddha had placed the right character and mindset at the start of the Metta Discourse? First of all, uh, thank you very much, uh, uh, Dr. Uh, Dr. Sri Victor v for uh, sitting with me for this uh, interesting discussion. And wanted to thank uh, BGF uh, Brother Chi for having this facilitated. And I think it's a very interesting uh, topic in the first place. Uh, how we're going to look at metta in our daily practice. And your question is that why did the Buddha mention about uh, 15 skillful habits uh, in the metta sutta prior to the practice of metta? The reason why the Buddha mentioned these 15, in my understanding, in the extensive reading is that uh, without uh, keeping us uh, onto a certain framework of our uh, integrity in our life, we may not be able to uh, extend radiate metta in the proper way. That's why he started by uh, asking us to practice these 15 skillful habits. Uh, they are habits. Habits mean they have to be developed over time. Uh, we are not be we are not going to make it in one day overnight. So, say for instance, uh, as you mentioned, uh, uprightness. Now, what is uprightness here? Uh, uju suju. Now, it is mentioned that uju means um, what we call uh, uprightness in terms of our uh, bodily actions and uh, verbal. Uh, part that means we have to have an uprightness in terms of our bodily activities and verbal activities such as uh, uh, not uh, killing uh, not stealing not sexually misconducting and then uh, not uh, lying not uh, you know slandering backbiting not uh, using harsh words and not gossiping idle chatting so uh, as long as we are trying to uh, avoid these uh, two parts, 
uh, which means uh, uh, integrity in terms of oh, uprightness, in terms of bodily action and verbal action, we are going to practice Uju. Now, normally people translate this to be straight is Uju. So, Uju means uh, more straight, which is uh, again uh, creating a lot of confusion. It says that uh, avoiding uh, evil, I would say unwholesome bodily actions, activities and verbal activities is uju. And suju means avoiding uh, the unwholesome uh, mental activities such as uh, uh, having covetousness, strong greed and ill will and wrong will. So if someone can avoid these three, that means that person is having suju. So uh, sakko, capability, I think everything is a matter of capability. When we mm -hmm. practice Buddhism, uh, you may come from different backgrounds, different situations, but when it comes to Buddhist practice, any Buddhist practice, not even metta, it demands uh, a certain level of skills, spiritual skills. Mm -hmm. So, uh, what we can see in terms of these uh, 15 skillful habits, starting from Sakko and ending with Nacha Kuddang Samachare Kenchena Vinyupare, never ever make a mistake that is uh, despised by. Uh, criticized by uh, wise people. I think all these are creating us to become a, an eligible person to start the metta practice. So I think we have to be eligible in the metta practice. That is why uh, the Buddha said we need to practice these 15 uh, at least to a certain extent. So personal uh, qualities and then uh, developing certain qualities in terms of how we are going to deal with other people. So this is why uh, it, it was meant these 15 skillful habits were mentioned in the first three stanzas mm -hmm. in the Metta Sutta. So we start off with some uh, 15 skillful practice and you don't have really have to be perfect in them but during the process of developing of walking the Buddhist life of practicing Metta I suppose these uh, personal skills would actually be very much enhanced as you move along. Is that correct? Uh, well perfectionism uh, can uh, be a certain uh, setback to us mm -hmm. because we are perfectly imperfect in our mm -hmm. anything mm -hmm. but we are trying our level best to do anything. Uh, I don't think it is automatically happening if we don't practice these 15 skillful habits with regard to metta practice. Mm -hmm. So we have to take a, an initiative uh, to start with these 15 but as we practice these 15 uh, in our own way as much as we can so uh, we will be uh, in uh, getting there in, uh, to a level where we can uh, properly practice metta mm -hmm. now I, I would like to give you an example let's say uh, someone wants to practice metta every day uh, with the usual prayer way may i be well may i be happy may i be peaceful may no harm come to me difficulties problems come to me and all that but the problem is that what if that person uh, is making some unwholesome activities during the day that can really uh, impede the practice. Mm -hmm. So when you have a Uju, Soju, Sakko, uh, life with these 15 skillful habits uh, that can really help that person to uh, sink into the mm -hmm. uh, Metta practice which is said after the first three stanzas. Mm -hmm. So there must be consistency in the practice. A person must have these skillful sk skills for the Metta uh, practice to be successful. Definitely. Yeah. In Buddhist, in the metta practice, what I can see is that there are three things that are needed. One is commitment, second consistency, third innovation. Mm -hmm. We have to stay committed to the metta practice, especially starting with the 15 skillful habits. Then stay consistent. Let's say someone is integral, someone is uh, uh, upright in terms of uh, sakko uju, uh, but on, only on one day, only on only for two days, three days, one week, then again one more week going to be spoiled very much with the external conditions. So not become consistent, that is not a good thing. Mm -hmm. And then more importantly, we have to innovate our metta practice because we are living with different conditions, living with different people. We have to embrace certain conditions that are unavoidable to pass by. So we have to innovate in our metta practice. So as you said, yes, we need to stay consistent as much as we can. I don't think that uh, we have to force anybody to uh, say, uh, feel that stay consistent, but try our level best to stay consistent within these 15 skillful habits.